Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Today I'm gonna to be working on an oil painting called Gems of Autumn. But before we start, I just wanted to let you know that I have a little coupon code here. If you would like to take 25% off anything in my online shop, you can do that at www.titoland.com. Use the code YouTube and you'll get 25% off your entire order. I have lots of prints and books and original paintings that are all ready to go to anywhere in the world but if you want it before Christmas you really should order before the end of the week to make sure it does get there in time so today while I'm painting I thought I would talk about something that I am frequently asked about which is art school and whether or not I went to art school or whether I recommend that other people go to art school before we get into it a little backstory when I was a teenager I was uh, well, I grew up in a really small town and I was kind of the only weird artsy girl and I got picked on quite a lot. And I eventually had the opportunity to move away because my mother was a nurse who commuted a really long time and she decided she wanted to live closer to where she was working. So we decided to move to a new city. And the city that we moved to was a lot bigger and had a really big high school, but it also had an alternative high school. I initially was going to go to the alternative high school, but I realized right away that the kids that were there had really serious problems, not like I was having where I was getting picked on a lot, but they were there because they were like on drugs. They were being let out of rehab every day to go to school. They had assaulted their teachers in their previous schools, a couple of them had actually been arrested for assaulting their teachers with weapons, and occasionally someone would get in trouble at the alternative school. So this was definitely not my crowd, and I didn't fit in there either. And eventually I came to the conclusion that I wanted to finish high school and go to college right away. So I took a test and determined that I needed to take one math class and then I could go get my GED. So that spring I took one math class and then I went and took my GED test and I got a hundred on almost everything except for math. I didn't do well in math but it was enough that I passed and I got my GED. So I was 16 years old and I had my GED and I thought okay well now I got to go to college or something but I hadn't really considered that it would be really difficult or illegal to rent an apartment because I wasn't 18 yet. And my options for going to a school that offered a program that I was really interested in were very limited. I lived in an area where the only college around was a community college that had programs like dental hygiene and radio broadcast, but neither one of those things were something I really wanted to do for a living. Um, and if I wanted to go to art school, I was going to have to move far away from my family and have my own house or apartment or something, my own, um, my own utility bills, my own car, and it was going to be very complicated as a 16 year old. So I decided to wait to go to college. I ended up enrolling in a computer animation program when I was 19 and I wish I knew then the things that I know now because I would have saved myself a lot of money. Initially to get in I had to give them a portfolio of my work which wasn't very good but for someone my age I think it was it was all right. The school was very enthusiastic about accepting me and when I got to school it was about a month before my 20th birthday so I had gone from being an early high school graduate to a non-traditional college student and when I got to the school, I realized that as bad as I was at art, all the people in my class, almost all of them, were way worse. And this was something that I thought, okay, well, we have three years for them to improve up to a professional level of art. This was a faster program, so you went to school year round and you had trimesters instead of semesters. and. Theoretically, in three years, we would all be better. But as I started to look around the school, I realized that they were still using those iMac computers that came in colors. I don't know if 
Um, some of you probably won't be old enough to even remember those. Or you might think of them as some sort of a, a kitschy throwback item from like the late 90s, early 2000s. But they were still using those computers. And I was like, there is no way that they have an actual computer animation program here. And these are the computers that we're using. And I'm not, I'm not that old. This was, well, it was like 10 years ago. So it, they were very out of date and they kept saying new computers are coming, new computers are coming, but I never saw any new computers. And all the computers were very old, way too old to run modern 3D rendering or animation software. So even though I had some really quality instructors, I had um, an animation teacher that worked on the original Dragon Ball and I had a figure painting teacher that was very, very good at painting figures and had been very successful as a figure painter. Despite that, it became pretty clear that the school actually wasn't set up to offer the program that they were offering us and that it was like a new thing that they had just introduced. And despite all of their promises and their insistence that the program would get better as we went through it, I had very little faith that any of us would leave school actually knowing how to animate on the computer, but having computer animation degrees. By the end of the first trimester, most of the people in my class had improved only because of the efforts of our teachers, but even then it became really clear to me that there was no way that in three years most of these people were going to be able to get a job. And I started to see that this school was really preying on these students. If they had any money, whether it was federal student loans or grants or scholarships, the school would take all of it and tell them that they were great artists and that they would totally be able to get a job someday as an artist or an animator or whatever they wanted to do. The reality was most of these people didn't have the rudimentary basic skills to even be accepted into an art program anywhere else. And once you had exhausted your federal grants and scholarships and any sort of loans you could get from the government, they would start encouraging you to apply for private loans, which had super high interest rates, but they would basically let you have any amount of money that the college asked them for. So the college recommended that I receive a $25,000 loan on top of the money that I had already gotten from the federal government, a loan my mother took out, grants that I had received, and that was just for the first year. When I started to think about it, I realized I'm going to be a hundred something thousand dollars in debt at the end of this with no guarantee that I'll even be able to use the software that I should be able to use as a graduate of an animation <laughs> program. And so I started looking at other things that I could do to try and salvage my, my time as I had moved to Arizona in order to go to school. and. I thought, you know, I've got a one-year lease on my apartment. I might as well try to stick it out for the year, maybe go to a different school, get some sort of a degree. Well, at this point, I found out that my credits, even though my college was accredited, wouldn't transfer to any other college. And so despite the fact that I had taken a really, really basic English class and some art classes, none of those credits would count at a different school. So I had to start completely over. Next semester, I changed my major to art education and thinking, you know, maybe computer animation, maybe it's not for me right now. Maybe I should just become an art teacher. And about this time, the industry that I was trying to get into was having a lot of problems. Someone that I knew actually lost his job. He was a computer programmer for a video game that was coming out at a local video game studio there in Arizona and that studio went under in the making of that video game and he lost his job like overnight and I thought gosh this doesn't actually seem that stable <laughs> and that, come to think of it I might actually have a better shot of having stable income on my own without an employer if this is what you have to look forward to. In community college I had the same professor the same figure painting professor that I'd had at the computer animation college and he was a great professor I just wasn't really interested in the kind of art he was trying to teach and this is the the thing that you'll encounter a lot in art schools is that 
a lot of the time, the curriculum is not what you need it to be. And you may not know that until you've already paid and enrolled and committed to going to school there. Once I realized that I had made a mistake in this entire adventure, I decided that it was time to take a break and figure out if I really wanted to continue trying to receive a formal education or if what I wanted to do was just try to make it as a freelance, self-employed, self-taught artist and maybe take workshops along the way. Taking breaks is something that I've always had a really difficult time with and I never seem to know if I should take a break or if I should just stick it out and in this particular case I really wrestled with this decision a lot but it's something that I'm still endeavoring to get better at learning when I need to just take a break. It could be something as small as just leaving my studio and going for a walk or taking a break from a project or something as big as taking a break from a major life change like going to college on the other side of the country. But I really need to learn when it's time to stop and sit back and just reflect on what has happened. I ended up leaving, dropping out, letting all of my, my credits expire, and I never went back to school. I really thought that if I had a degree, it would offer me a level of stability that I didn't think was possible as an artist. I no longer think that that is the case. I do think that there is a lot of instability in being an artist, but there is a lot of instability in being a self-employed electrician or in being a taxi driver or even being a doctor. There's so many different unknowns and variables when you own your own business and you run the place and you cut all the payroll checks. I do think that a formal education was one of the single dumbest things that I ever spent money on. And I wish that I had not tried to get an art degree and that I had gone any place except for an art school. I wish that I had gone and gotten maybe like an art history degree or something so I could at least teach or be a curator. But I didn't do that. I, I tried to get an art degree from an art school and I totally got scammed. This is the problem that a lot of art students face today. A lot of art colleges are for-profit schools. And even though this may upset some people, I'm just gonna say it, most for-profit schools are a complete waste of time and money. They're scams and you will never leave there with the level of skill that you would have left with if you had gone to a not-for-profit or just a regular public college. There are so many of these schools now. It's, I mean, it's a huge business model. They make hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. I mean, who wouldn't want to be involved in that kind of a business? Of course, it's great. You know, people are young and dumb and they hand over their money. But you got to be a little bit, a little bit more smarter than I was, a little bit more smarter than I still am. Oh, great. Now, you got to be a little smarter than I was back then. And you need to really look at what these schools are actually offering you. And when you have the opportunity to see graduates work, go and look at it. And if it seems like most of it is not stuff that you see on the market today, like if, you, if you're looking to get into video game design and you go to their graduate show and the artwork that's on display there is clearly not the level of a professional video game, then don't go to that school. I know that a lot of artists perfect their portfolio and their abilities after they leave art school, but I really wish that when I went to that art show at my school, cat, sorry, <laughs> I really wish that when I had gone to the art show at that school and I saw people looking really dejected and they had, you know, business cards out and they were just hoping that someone from a video game company would come by and recruit them. I wish that I had taken it as a sign of things to come and had just cut my losses and run before they convinced me to take out even more loans that I probably would never be able to pay back with a degree from their school or a job that I could get with a degree from their school. Most of my friends 
that have degrees have told me many times that they have never actually been asked to see their degree, that they've never even had to say that they had one in order to get a job. I don't know how much of that is true and how much of that is anecdotal. With the work that I do, I have never needed a degree, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't have had opportunities to do things that I don't do right now if I had had one. There are a lot of jobs for people with art degrees, and I know a lot of people think art degrees are a waste of money, but they're not. It's just that you need to be really careful about what your art degree is in and where you get it from. If you want to learn the art basics, if you want to learn how to draw, if you want to learn how to paint figures, then look at the faculty teaching the classes at the school that you want to go to and see, are the people teaching these classes the kind of artists that I can respect and look up to and learn from, or are they going to be people that will say, oh, you don't need to know how to draw, you can use a tracer or a projector, or you can, you know, forget that, drawing is old news, you know, you should do installations made out of toilet paper instead. You know, these are the kinds of things that you need to be asking yourself before you go to art school. What kind of teachers is my prospective college going to provide me? Are they going to provide me the kind of teachers that I need? Or are they going to provide me with teachers that are not even able to master the basics of painting and drawing themselves? I think that a lot of people dismiss community colleges and four-year colleges way too rapidly. Often these schools do have decent teachers or great teachers who are teaching basic art classes. And if you go there and you want to learn something that isn't being taught and you talk to the teacher about it, sometimes they're willing to work with you because they really just want to teach and that's why they're there. Usually they're artists who are looking for you know, a steady paycheck to pay for a car or just some money that they can count on for Christmas or whatever. They usually have, you know, an actual day job as an artist or teaching might be their day job and painting might be their side gig or whatever, but you need to look at the people who are teaching and if they're actual working artists that are doing the kind of things you want to do, be willing to give them a shot, even if they teach at a two-year or a community college. The other great thing about teachers at community colleges is that community colleges are frequently cheaper than schools that are known as art schools. So you could always go to a community college and take your basic painting and drawing classes, learn how to paint figures, get your basic English and math and that kind of stuff out of the way, and then go from there. Those credits should transfer to any actual accredited college that isn't a private for-profit college. In the past, when I've mentored people, what I have told them when they asked me whether or not they should go to art school is that they should try to find a practical field of art that interests them. So it could be like botanical illustration or medical illustration or graphic design or art history or any sort of job where you could get a regular paycheck but still be making art is what I recommend. You can find a college that will teach these kinds of art classes and art programs all over the place and they don't cost more because they're just regular colleges. There are actually some art schools that cost more than some prestigious law schools, like to become a lawyer is less expensive than to get a four-year art degree. There are some colleges where becoming a medical doctor is cheaper than getting an art degree. I don't really know how to elaborate exactly what I think of, of these practices in polite language. I think that it's predatory and I think that everyone who wants to go to art school really needs to do their research on the school that you want to go to and maybe don't go to anything that has art in the name. One of my teachers actually told me that if something says that it's for art, it's got art in the name or art anywhere on it, it's going to cost 10 times more than if you just went and bought it at the hardware store. It's the same thing for schools. If it says school of art or art school of some place or whatever, it's going to be way more 
then another college like across the street would be for the same thing. And you might actually get a better education at the college across the street that doesn't have art in the name. When it comes to getting an education, there are so many different resources out there today. You can get tons of videos for free on YouTube. You can go to workshops all over the world. You can even attend online school. There's online atelier where you can go to art school without leaving your home. There are so many options out there that cost so much less than getting an education at a art school. If you still want to get an education in art, I recommend getting a degree in business or anything that might help you as an entrepreneur and then taking online classes or going to workshops or paying for private classes with artists that you respect or anything other than going to an actual quote art school because you'll get a lot more for your money and you'll be able to pick and choose classes that actually apply to the type of art that you want to learn. If you want to paint better, then you should, you know, look for a, a painting class. You don't want to take a broadly termed art class and end up learning how to sculpt out of, you know, recycled trash or something, which is unfortunately what happens a lot these days. A lot of schools just don't teach basic art skills anymore, even if they say that they are art schools. I don't think that I will ever pursue formal education again. Sometimes I think about it, but to be honest, the cost is just too prohibitive. And at this point, I don't have any student loans anymore, and I want to keep it that way. I'm not against formal education, especially not for other people. But in my case, it was one of the most expensive mistakes that I ever made. And because of that mistake that I made and because of the way that federal grants and things work, I probably will never have the opportunity to use that money that was pretty much stolen from me by that school to pursue any kind of other education. My goal in sharing this story is never to tell people that school is bad and that they should never ever go. My goal is only to tell people that you need to be very careful and that there are people out there who will happily steal your grants and your scholarships and will totally lie to you and look you and your parents in the eye and shake your hands and just steal thousands and thousands of dollars that you could use to get a legitimate education and a job someday. These places don't really care what happens to you. If they did, then they wouldn't do what they do, but they do what they do and no one is stopping them. So be careful and be open-minded. Look for education wherever it may come. I hope that this video helps someone somewhere in making a good decision about their future. It's important to remember that these schools will never tell you the truth about what they're really up to. The people that work for them are trained to lie. They're trained to smile and take your money because they really just need a paycheck at the end of the day. They have kids to feed, they got bills to pay. They're just doing their jobs as admissions counselors or whatever. But at the end of the day, they're stealing from you. And not only are they stealing money from you, but they might be stealing certain financial and educational opportunities that you won't have again. So take time, do research, make a good decision, and if you don't want to go to art school and you don't want an art degree, that's perfectly fine. You can always have art as something that you study independently. Sorry this was such a long video, but it is a really long story and there are a lot of things that I've left out. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. And if I need to, I'll always do a, a part two some other day. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.